boy Derek Brent here with Strike7Sports.com. Today I just want to provide a quick review of the uh, docu-series featuring Tom Brady called Man in the Arena. It kicked off um, this week. I think it was Tuesday if I'm not mistaken. No, Tuesday or Wednesday. It was the first episode of the, the docu-series. On, uh, I think you can only find it on ESPN Plus. Uh, Tom Brady, Man in the Arena. It's kind of, to me, just looking at it, it was, um, resembles, somewhat it resembles The Last Dance, um, kind of doc, chronolog, uh, chronicling, um, chronicling Tom Brady's, uh, upcoming, you know, growing up as a um, NFL quarterback. Um, I was able to watch the, uh, first episode, um, yesterday on uh, ESPN Plus, when I had some time, uh, time available, I went and check it out. I'm impressed by it so far, you know, um, if this, if the engagement is pretty high on this video, this review, I'm possibly going to do a few more of these, I'd probably, or do a uh, final thoughts on it just to sum everything up of what I've observed of the, uh, the docuseries, but I watched the first episode yesterday, and it had featured, uh, I think it was Willie McGinnis of that uh, Patriot squad, and it's just Tom Brady, for the most part, was doing the talking, it was the first Basically, on that first, it was talking about that uh, first year of um, Tom Brady's run as the uh, Patriots starting QB. He took over for Drew Bledsoe. Um, and just watching the whole series just brings back a lot of memories for me because I remember that year. I remember what happened that during that year when Brady took over. It was the year 9/11 occurred. Um, I was in 11th grade when it happened. And Bretzel well, at the time was the highest paid cute highest paid quarterback in the National Football League in the history of the game. Hundred million dollar man. Um at playing at the peak of his career. Um he had uh Parcells at the time as his head was his head coach. He looked Parcells went to the Jets. Belichick uh, was supposed to be the coach of the new coach of the Jets, but he decided to sign with uh, New England and they had committed to bless so long term, but that injury occurred against the Jets on I think it was Sunday Night Football, if I'm not mistaken. And Bray took over, and just the rest of it was history, though. But what happened during that time, just looking at it from there was this first episode, it was pretty much going through analyzing that um, that relationship between Blesso and Brady at the time. Um, I was I'm, I'm, I think this man. I don't, um, to me, I think Blesso handled it pretty well, man. He handled not getting his job back pretty well, in my opinion. Um, didn't really at the time there was no social media to um go out and vent on vent his frustrations or anything like that. It was pretty much he was talking to the media on what on what happened, on how he felt about things. You know, they were right in your locker room, right in your face with the cameras getting quotes from you, recording what you said, putting it in, pr in print in the newspaper, on the shows, all that stuff. I think even, I don't even think the debate shows were around at that time. It was just um, pretty much Sports Center, Sports Center, CNN, SI, all those other shows. There wasn't no um, First Take, uh, PTI. I think PTI came out of Fury Year, like three years after that, after the old Brady run got started. But there wasn't no PTI, there wasn't no First Take. Um, Skipper Shannon undefeated. It was none of those debate shows out there just to break this down. But blue to me, what I take away, my biggest takeaway from this is that Drew Bresso handled it pretty well, man. He was mature about it, this benching. I won't say benching, but him losing the job. Even though it really hurt him. It really hurt him that he wasn't able to get back get back on the football field. You know, and that take that, that team had yeah, pretty good team. It was a pretty good defense, man. That New England Patriots defense was pretty good, man. Looking at it now, man. Really good football team. Really um, detailed, you know, from everything, from start to finish. Um, it it kind of reminded me of the team I see right now. What they have is uh, with Matt Jones, the star QB. Um, he does nothing flashy. Just make the right throws, make the right decisions. Um, defense is not, you know, loaded with, with – um, High caliber names, you know, big names on the, on the roster, but they're, they, you know who they are. They, they, um, I won't say new, you, you know who they are, but they're pretty good players. They make the right plays at the right time. They're always in the right place to make make big plays. You know, they got um, 
Dante Hightower, Kyle Van Noy, who left New England, signed with the Dolphins, and I came back to the New England. Um, J.C. Jackson, um, Matthew Judon, who was their pickup from uh, Baltimore. But it kind of resembles that team. That team we saw in 01, 2001, they had a pretty, a really good defense. Offense, their offense wasn't nothing to cry home about, nothing to, nothing to uh, write home about, but they were pretty good. They made the right plays. Brady put them in position, man. You know, and that team went 11 and 5. I think they uh, they had the second seed, the uh, second seed in the uh, NFC play, AFC playoff picture. They beat um, the the Raiders in that controversial game, tuck rule game, and they went on the road to beat um, the Steelers at home. At well, at Heinz Field, went to the Super Bowl and beat the Rams, who was heavily favored to win that game, and. That pretty much started the Brady dynasty, man. You know? And he's, excuse me, still going to this day, man. Still going to this day. Still going. Now, this for me, this for my takeaway, just the dude came up, man. This dude was a seven round pick. Seven round pick out of, uh, six or seven round pick out of Michigan. I remember Tom Brady playing in uh, Michigan at, back in the day at the big house. And they were kind of always trying to replace him with better talent. Try to replace him with Drew Henson. Um, he was, uh, I think Brady was uh, Brian Greasy's uh, backup that year. They won the national championship at uh, Michigan when he played um, Washington State in the Rose Bowl. At the time, they were still split. They, they still um, shared the national championship. They shared it, you know, splitting the national title. They think they split it with uh, Nebraska that year. It was Peyton Manning's last year as a um, at Tennessee, in Nebraska, the Tennessee, for the action national championship game, but Michigan going to split of it. And uh, I used to hate it back then when they had to split the national championship, but Michigan, you know, he, did, he was a good player at Michigan, man. He, when he got, he got in the game, he got his opportunity, he did pretty well at, at uh, University of Michigan. And I felt like if he would have got a shot at a position, at a course starting, at a starting position, he would have took advantage of it. You know, and that's what he did, man. That's another takeaway I, I um, observed from this um, docu series so far in this first episode. When you when you're a backup QB, always be prepared. Always be prepared and take advantage of your opportunity. Always, because you never know when you're gonna get the opportunity again. And that's what Tom Brady did. He got in there, um, impressed Belichick and the coaching staff, and then decided to go with Tom Brady. You know, it's, it's not too. It's very rare that you see that. It's very rare that you see a backup QB from the, coming out from the seventh round come in and do that. Very rare, you know. Kurt, Kurt Warner was undrafted. He did pretty well. Hall of Famer. Zach, um, Russell Wilson, third round pick. Um, uh, who else? Dak Prescott, fourth rounder. But are they going to have a, long, a career with this much longevity where it's their job, and nobody's gonna take it from me. Is it gonna are they gonna, are they gonna have that type of drive when they get in the latter part of their careers? We don't know. We don't know yet. You know, but so far they're looking good. So that's what I think about this series so far. I was impressed with it by it so far. I'm gonna be looking out for the next episode when they uh, release it. I think it's gonna be Tuesday or Wednesday next week. But pretty good docu series so far. I'm looking forward to seeing the next episode. And where are they gonna take it? What route they gonna take it as after you win this first Super Bowl? Where are they gonna take it from there? You know, but we'll see. But anyways, man, that's the last y'all for right now, man. Give me a like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Let me know how y'all feel with the docu series if you watch it so far. Also, um, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell notification icon for the latest updates on um, content I put out. Also in the description box below, check out strikesevensports.com for latest content on the NFL, the NBA, and much more. Have a blessed day. Peace.